Let's go to the uh, Toyota of Hollywood guest line shop where 1,500 Toyotas indoors and one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. And then we'll talk to the television voice of your Miami Heat, Bally Sports Sun tonight, 7.30. Heat and Celtics coverage begins at 7 oh, o'clock. Got a little workout in. Ah, Eric getting a little workout in this morning. Got your Eric. Peloton shirt on. Ooh. Just because you wear the shirt don't mean you got the workout in. Don't let it fool you. <laughs> hey, you didn't, you didn't get that shirt without that bike somewhere in that house. Oh, you know it, buddy. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm about 300 rides into my Peloton career. I, I enjoy that. Yeah, uh, Eric, what was uh, your big takeaways from opening night the other night? You know, it started off great, got a little, uh, got a little sloppy, but all in all, it was great to have the team back. Did you have uh, any a couple big takeaways from the first game? Well, it was, uh, you know, obviously a disappointing opener for the Heat. Uh, you know, defensively to give up 116 points, uh, you let DeRozan who's an outstanding player. I mean, yeah, DeMar DeRozan, old school, doesn't shoot the three a lot, although he made a few of them the other night. But, you know, the guy went off for 19 points in the third quarter, 28 of his 37 points. And, uh, you know, the Heat defense was poor. But but I thought they can, a lot of those DeRozan shots were contested. He, DeMar's t- tremendous, and uh, he's a tough challenge defensively. Um, but you know, like they, they're also working some things out. Guys are in different roles, even though it's the same roster. A lot of guys are in different spots trying to get used to those things. Yeah. I mean, the two changes to the lineup, everybody knows about Caleb Martin at the four and, and Tyler hero, uh, you know, as Kyle Lowry's backcourt partner, uh, you know, some of that can be attributed to that, but listen, you, you don't want to start making excuses. Uh, Chicago was without their starting backcourt and Lonzo ball and Zach Levine. Uh, that's what made the loss a little bit more disappointing. But, hey, it's game one of 82 and not much time to lament. Tonight's an even more difficult challenge with the Celtics in town. Eric, this seems to happen in the beginning of every year that uh, Spo has to figure out how to group guys together so that they can either get scoring or what guys are defensive liabilities. So he has to have some defensive guys you know, with the second unit, he has to kind of spread it out like that. And it just seems to take time. And they do this in the beginning of every year. Um, so I'm just wondering whether this was more of a a thing with, say, like Oladipo not being able to be in that second group and 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 being able to have defensive stoppers um, the whole game. And also the fact that Tyler Hero had such a long break in the second half um, that they're just trying to figure this stuff out. And that played a role in this too. You know, Leroy, um, it's funny. I watching the game. I, I, it it hit me. Well, Tyler and Jimmy on the bench for a lot of that fourth quarter, Mm -hmm. but you know, Spo knows better than all the rest of us. You, You look at the plus minus and I'm not a huge plus minus guy, but do you, do you realize not one heat starter, had a plus rating and the plus minus. The best rating was Caleb Martin's minus seven. Struce mm-hmm. had the best. Struce had the best plus minus. Uh, actually, he didn't. Gabe, uh, let's see. Duncan Robinson had the best plus minus. But I thought Struce <laughs> was the Heat's best player on, on opening night. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they, they're going to have to figure it out. Uh, I, I think the Oladipo thing is a little bit of an issue with the second unit. But uh, I don't think that's why the Heat lost that game. They, right. they got to be, they, you know. I think a lot of training camp was was, and and I can't say this firsthand. I did not see the practices at training camp, but it just hit me that this this group sort of had a, an offensive mindset going into the season, and they have a chance with their athleticism and depth and versatility to have an excellent season on the offensive end. Remember, they averaged 110 points a game last year. That was the second highest scoring season in Heat history. Um, I think this team has a chance to be that good or, or hopefully better this year. But we all know in Miami, you know, it's it's got to be anchored defense. by defense. And the defense was poor, poor mm-hmm. against Chicago. And and that defense is going to be tested tonight because Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum just put up 70 points between them on like 63% shooting against Philadelphia in their opener on Tuesday. Uh, so they're going to bring it tonight. Yeah, it's interesting you mention that, Eric, because you know what the philosophy of this team has always been, defense first. That's just the franchise. And then not only that, but your two best players in Jimmy and Bam are two of the best defenders in the league. And Jimmy mentioned this in the locker room. He goes, look, I know that's today's day and age, but whenever they lose, he always relates to we got to guard better. So do you think that that's something that it's nice to say because you lose a great defender in P.J. Tucker, but ultimately, 
I feel like the best, the key cogs of the team, the coach, the franchise, and your two, your two top dogs, those are defensive guys. Like, do you think that philosophy will pan out through the year? I think so. Listen, you, you, you can't just talk about defense. If you're going to be a, a good to great defensive team, you got to, you got to talk with your team and work on it and make it an emphasis every single day. And, you know, coach Spo and his staff do that with the heat. So, um, I don't know what happened to the Heat on opening night. You know, um, listen, we know that Bam and Kyle Lowry struggled big time offensively. Um, and, and here's another thing. You know, the team looked very good in the first quarter, right? But a lot of that was because they went six of eight from three in the first quarter. They went six of 20 the rest of the game. And, and so often you see it when shots don't go in, you know, your defense has to get better. But I think the Heat let it get to them and uh, – you saw slippage throughout that game on the defensive end. And once DeRozan got it going, uh, you know, he, he took over that game. And they really, they were, they were the better team in the second half by a lot. Talking to Eric Reed, you guys can catch him and John Cry tonight. Valley Sports Sun, Heat and Celtics, 7 o'clock. Their coverage gets going. 7.30 tip from FTX Arena. Looking forward to this Eastern Conference Finals rematch night. And then tomorrow... And no rest, man. We're going right back at it with the uh, the Toronto Raptors uh, in for a couple games. Eric, what do you make of this? Uh, th- I noticed this on the schedule this year. A lot of back to backs with the same, not back to back days, but back to back games with the same team. Almost baseball like. Uh, what do you make of the the scheduling of that? Do you like that? Uh, do you think that's going to be an interesting twist of of you know taking on the same team so close in so many nights? Uh, Tobin, I like it. Um, I, I think it's been a long time in coming. Uh, the pandemic brought it on, and I think it's here to stay. It, it is a, a you know a, a takeaway from baseball, and you know why make Toronto make two separate trips to South Florida? So uh, you talk about load management and uh, you know ma- maintain maintenance of the players' health and and stamina throughout the course of this eight month marathon. I think it makes it easier. Um, so I like it and. <laughs> Selfishly, as a broadcaster, it makes your preparation a lot easier, man. You you, you get ready for one game twice, so it's good. Especially when you have that reference point of just two days ago, you know, talking about what player can do what and who did well against this guy. So it it, it kind of lends to, you know, just the overall, like, I don't know if I like it as much to play the same team twice, and here's why. Because when, when things get heated, and they will, because we got a couple of antagonists on this team. When they get heated, to have to come back two nights later and play against the same guys, you know, especially in basketball. Well, I like that because I like shenanigans. You like so shenanigans. I, I like the right. fact that that could uh, that that could escalate to some more uh, some more drama the next night. Listen, I think the only concern with it is, and, and what probably prevented it from happening until now, uh, the fear, like you know, w- would the ticket buyer. Uh, be cool with seeing the same team twice in a row. Right. Hey, it it works in baseball. Um, I don't see any reason why it, why it won't work in, in the NBA. Plus, I just feel like I don't know about you, Eric, but I really feel like I look around the league. There's not a lot of teams anymore that I look and say they don't they don't have anybody that I want to see. Like even Toronto, you may not think is the sexiest team. Yeah, Scotty Barnes is one of the best rookies on the planet. They're a very weird team, so. It's very rare now that there's going to be a matchup and you're like, nah, not into it. They don't have anybody I want to see. Obviously, there'll be a couple of Tanka Fonzi, but I feel like there's less than ever. It feels like the, the talent is so flush throughout the league. I don't know if you're noticing that as well. Yeah, they're, they, listen, there are a couple of weaker teams this year rebuilding, but Utah got a win on opening night. That, that surprised the heck mm-hmm. out of Denver. So you you never know. I mean, every every night there, 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 there's a show to be seen in the NBA with, with, with all the great players and, and the great competition. And for the Heat, you know, this is the first time in our in our 35 year history that we open up with four straight at home. And what a test. Three games in the first four nights, the first four opponents, all playoff teams in the East last year. And then after you finish with Toronto on Monday night, you, you hit the road for Portland. Golden State and and Sacramento, but listen, it's eighty two one game adventures, brother, and and tonight is another. Uh, I, the the best way to get over that that you know disappointment on opening night, you bounce back tonight. Nobody's going to be thinking about Chicago anymore. Absolutely. Before we get you out of here, Eric, and you guys again, you can see Eric Reed on the call tonight with John Crotty, Heat and Celtics, Bally Sports Sun, seven thirty tip off from FTX Arena. Seven o'clock is when Bally's coverage gets going. Uh, Eric, really cool moment uh, before opening, uh, before the opening tip. You, along with the other Heat originals, you guys uh, 
got to uh, be acknowledged by the crowd. You guys got a gift there from the franchise. What did that moment mean to you? And uh, like 35 years, I guess, like the idea that the, the, the franchise – that started off in the Western Conference is now here this many years later. Uh, what did that moment mean to you? And and can you believe it? It's been this this long already. No, to be honest with you, it's 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 a big number to to sort of grasp. Uh, I got down here in 1988 at the tender age of 30, and uh, you know, for for me, that the years have flown by. I, I just keep getting ready for the next game, and I keep enjoying each and every one of them. And it's hard to believe that we're in our 35th season as a franchise and I'm in my 35th season with the Heat as a broadcaster. I've been blessed, guys. Uh, I started doing basketball play-by-play when I was a junior at Ithaca College. Don't ask me how, because it's a a longer story, but I started doing Cornell University basketball games. Uh, I was an Ithaca College student. I, I got hooked up doing Cornell's games on radio back in my junior year. I think that's 46 years ago. I, I have uh, done play-by-play for somebody, and uh, what what a joyride it's been. But to to you know what was so much fun for us the other night, uh, the the seven of us, you know, we were huddled together in the corner of the court before the ceremony began, and just the conversation and the camaraderie, the friendship built over 34 years with Jeff Craney and Sammy Schulman, Jose Pineda and Tony Fiorentino and Ron Rossi and her three of the best and closest friends I have. You know, I started out as, as the color analyst on, on the Heat simulcast those first three years. And come on, me, me as the color guy, um, you know, not being a, an ex-player or an ex-coach, um, that was tough. And I don't know if I would have been successful at it or not if it wasn't for Ron Rothstein. And I've, I've told this story often, the trust uh, that Ron showed in me right from year one and day one, the access he afforded me in that inaugural season in those first three years really enabled me to fast track, uh, you know, my game as an NBA broadcaster after, you know, six years working college basketball in the Big East, another five years in the Ivy League with Cornell. But it helped me. I, you know, I've been following the NBA since I'm seven years old, but uh, working in the league is a whole different story. And I could never thank Coach Rothstein uh, enough for for that access and belief he showed in me right from game one of year one. So it was special, you know, for all for all seven of us. And uh, it was very nice of the Heat to do that, to acknowledge us like that before the game. So you guys deserve it. Eric, we look forward to hearing your call tonight with John Crotty on Bally Sports Sun. 7.30 tip off tonight, Heat and Celtics. 7 o'clock is when their coverage gets going. We always appreciate the time, Eric. I'll see you at the arena tonight. And uh, thank you for giving us some time. Thanks, Eric. Hey, my, my pleasure. Hey, big fans of, of you guys and, and your program. And uh, keep up the great work. And Tobin, you know you, you know how much I love your Heat passion. So keep it rolling, man. And we'll see you at the ball game tonight. We'll do. We'll do. Take care, Eric. Again, you guys can catch Eric tonight. A uh, little coverage of Heat and Celtics blood feud night here in South Florida. Heat and Celtics, Panthers and Lightning. But coming up next.